Jesus is the light, so we follow him, walking with him in light. We walk with him in faith, with inner joy and joyful fellowship. And today, we're going to talk a little bit about fullness of faith. Well, what does fullness of faith mean? I talked about a little already that we're going to walk with Jesus in faith, but what is fullness of faith? We say we believe and we have hope beyond our disbelief or our unbelief. We believe, but it's our unbelief that we need help with. It's those things that we don't quite understand and we want to ask questions and we're not sure how to ask those questions. So we do try, and yet it is a difficult question because we want to know that interesting question when we think about fullness of faith. You know the question I ask when you think about a cup. How full is full? Till it gets to overflowing? Or when is the cup half full and half empty? If you look at the picture on the screen there, you're going to say, hmm, that's a neat picture, isn't it? Half full and half empty, how do they do that? The liquid's on the top half. How do we understand being half full? Full, full or empty, fullness of faith, overflowing faith. But there's always room for more, isn't there? You always need a little bit more. Psalm 112, which we just shared together, says, those who fear God, and that's an older expression of relationship with God, fearing God. Today we believe in loving God, and God who is filled with love shares it with us. Anyway, those who fear God delight in his commandments. That is, they, people who believe in God, delight in his commandments. That is, they look at what God has said and say, I will follow that. I believe that because that's the way God intends for me to live. With faith. With guidance. And mostly with hope. Those who fear God also trust God to show them the way. Sometimes when we wonder, you know, I mean, our dear friend Dale, he knows the way how to get from Toronto to Windsor. It's really easy, right, Dale? Follow the tracks. Dale is an engineer for Via Rail. Okay? <laughs> he knows how to get here. Really easy. Just go through tracks. But you know, sometimes it's not so easy to follow the way of God. It's not direct. Because you have outside influences. We have outside influences in our lives. And we sometimes wonder, why? Why? Why do we have to take into consideration those other outside influences? It's because we need to understand our decision-making gift. We're all individuals. God made the path big to include everyone. But not everyone is the same. And I think sometimes we forget that not everybody's the same. We just think, oh, everybody should get on the train and keep going. The same path that's direct. It's not that same way in our life. We have many different ways and things that happen in our life. Relationships come and go. People come, people die. And yet our whole life is a path. And if we believe that path is the path to God and our eternal home. When you think about how, this is the question I want you to consider. Are we faithful in this time and generation? Are we faithful in this time right now? Are we faithful to God? It's difficult to answer because it's not measurable. We can't say, well, I was faithful up until the age of whatever. Or in between my 20s and my 30s, I was faithful to God. And then I decided, no, I don't want to have anything to do with God. And you know what that happens? Are we faithful? But then we say, well, I was so faithful after I was able to do so much things in mission work, and I gave, and I did my time. But that's not what we're talking about. Being faithful means believing. Being believing. Believing. Others might say, I'm faithful. Because in relationship, you're faithful to the one you love in your spousal relationship. But to God, you're not as faithful because you're not sure about who you are from day to day. How can God do that? We question God. We wonder. And sometimes we say that about our spouses too. How could you do that? 
Maybe it's mine, I don't know. How can we do that? How do we understand God? Having faith and being faithful are alike because one builds upon the other. Having faith, being faithful. Faith is defined in the book of Hebrews is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Being sure of what we hope for. What do you hope for in this life? What are you certain about? We often talk about death and taxes, but that's not what I'm talking about. In this life, there are certain things to have faith in and believe. And one of the things we witnessed today was the fact that there's another generation coming. If there were no babies born, that means there's no hope for a faithful generation to come. God would say that's enough, no more. But there is another generation. There is another generation to follow. And in four years, these children will be going to school. We don't know what kind of school or where they'll be because there's less and less schools out there. There's less and less children being born in this area of the city being raised in this area of the city. We don't know what the future holds, but we can know what faith holds for us. And that's God. The path of tomorrow. The, it is, faith is a substance of hope, a foundation for hope to exist. And even accepts that which is, appears unreasonable. Faith is an action based upon a promise made. Think about that. When people marry, they make a promise to each other. And they live out that promise all the days of their married life. And if we make promises to God all different times in our life, depending on how old we are, and we make promises on behalf of others, like our parents did today, on behalf of their little girls, those are the reasons why we have faith to live and move forward in our understanding of who we are and can be with God. Faith is a choice. That's a really big kind of thing. It is a choice. We're going to have faith or not. And you know what? You don't need to just have a little bit of faith. You have a lot. Because God wants to be a part of your living daily lives. Being faithful is a response to this choice, but what responses are you making because of your choice of faith? That is what we call about having a faithful life. We continue to read in Psalm 112. Those who are blessed are light in the darkness. How many of you are tired of not seeing the sun? This is winter. You know, it's like, whoa, it's like you turn on the big lights when the sun, you can actually see it, right? I mean, there was a couple hours yesterday, maybe, you could actually see the sun, and then the snow. Well, there's a story about a church. They were having a special evening celebration, and it was a wonderful celebration of ministry. I'm not even sure what it was, but there were just a lot of people gathered in this church building, and the power went out in the evening, because there was a huge, big thunderstorm with lots of lightning and lots of action outside. And so everybody was sitting in the dark in this church, gathering, and you know, someone was like, what am I going to do? You're sitting in the church in the dark, what are you going to do? Then somebody's like, well, it's out all around town, around the area of the church, so what are you going to do? Well, one of the quick-thinking elders of the church said, let's get candles. So they went and they found the candles, you know, the kind of candles that we use here, you know, for Christmas Eve, the little ones, everybody had a nice little candle. The kind that was uh, carried in, just a nice little candle. So everybody got a candle. And they lit it so they could see. They didn't do anything else. They just sat with the candle and they could see each other. Then they thought, hmm, I wonder if I should go home. It's pouring rain, lightning and thunder and everything else outside. They had planned to be together to worship God. The lights went out, they have a candle. Should they go? Should they stay? Well, I'm not going to tell you what happened with that particular church gathering. What happened was that they think about it, the thought within it was, if we have a candle in the dark within the church, where are we taking that light? Where are we taking 
taking that light that God gives us, that faithfulness of God, that lit candle that's burning within us, if we truly believe, where are we taking that light? Are we going to go out to the dark places outside the walls? Or are we going to bring it to where people are needing to be relit, reboosted, to have their faith lifted? Again, faith lifted. So that they can be shining in again in a new way. This is a situation we can often face. We choose to have faith. Do we choose to take our faith out there? Where are we taking that faith? How are we sharing? How are we telling the story? Jesus says, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand to illumine the room. On Friday, it was really interesting. In this area, I just live really close here, and it was really interesting on Friday. I heard this bang. What is going on? And then everything in my house went dead. The fridge stopped going. We had no lights, no nothing. My washing machine stopped. The computer went off. The phone went <laughs> Really weird. And it was really weird. And everything just stopped. There was no power. My next door neighbor called me because I didn't think my phone would work. And she called me. She said, power there. And I said, yeah, I know. And, and she said, uh, uh, I called and went to utilities. And I said, oh, okay, that's really good. She goes, they don't know what caused it. It's just in our area. I don't know what's going on. I said, okay. What do you do? You can't do anything. You can't do the laundry. You can't work on the computer. You can't do anything. It was dull outside, so I couldn't really do much. Anyway, the next thing I heard is these men yelling down the street. I don't know what it is. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So I looked outside. There was a few, few, some guys from Enwood. And I said, so what do you think the problem is? And the one man said, it's a good thing I ate my lunch. Go, what do you mean? That squirrel. The squirrel shorted out whole transformer system in the area of the neighborhood. <laughs> and I just said, I just feel for that little squirrel. He says, oh no, it's not together anymore. <laughs> but in those moments, within about half an hour, we had the power back on. I called the next door neighbor and said, I know what happened. It was a squirrel that was on the lines. And oh, it's that poor little squirrel. And we just think, but we have power. What did we do in that half an hour when we just thought nothing else could be done? I reached out to the neighbor and said, what happened? And I thought, hmm, what if we had taken that moment to do something different? As I left my house, as I had to leave my house to go somewhere, and I waved to my Inwin friends. And I said, well, what a day they had, being up after the school. What does that say for us? Faithful, no matter what happens to us in our lives. What happens in our community, outside the doors of where we gather to be lifted in our faith. Our world needs to be lit up. Right now, people are gathered together in Sochi, Russia to watch the Olympics and share together and that kind of stuff. There have been some hype. There's been problems already. There's been different things about the conditions and what's going on there. But the thing is, is if you watch the opening ceremonies, you saw the light. You know what I'm talking about? The cauldron was lit. And at that moment, people said, it's happening. Can you imagine when the lights of these candles that were lit for these little girls go on again throughout their lives? They have been touched by the Spirit of God because parents have made a decision to bring them to share in Christ's light. And we here, as gathered together as Glenwood Tramford Church family, are glad you're here because we share in that light all the time. We grow together. You hear her talk about Apple Crisp, and you hear about the UCW ladies, and you hear about choir parties. But that's the life of the church. That's how we share in the light here in London. It's how we share with one another across the city. No matter if the power stops, the light will continue to be shown. God said, let your light shine. Wherever you may go, 
outside the walls of a church. Let it shine. Hold that light in your hand and remember, Christ is with you. Share it. Show it. Love it. I mentioned to you one of the things is about when we share in the sacrament of baptism, I always have the branch. I know people are little, don't like to have that. You forgot your cleaning to clean your glasses, I know. And part of that is, I have this question. Do you remember the day when you were baptized? What date was it when you were baptized? Well, you do? It was the day you were confirmed, so you're a little bit older. Yes. Okay. So some people might remember the day they were baptized. I don't remember the day that I was baptized, but I mean, I know that from, from today. Rowan and Madison will hear about the story about their baptism day. One of the things that there's a story about is a man whose name is George Weigel. He's a, he did a biography of Pope John Paul II. And jo Pope John Paul, when he was first elected Pope, he went back to his home parish where he was raised as a child. And when he walked into the sanctuary, he went to the baptismal font, and he hugged it, and he kissed it, and he said, thank you, God, for faith in my family. Because if it wasn't for his baptism, he would never become Pope, but if it wasn't for his baptism, he would not have been introduced to faithfulness in his life. So the day on his baptism is an anniversary celebration. So think about that. Look back for your church records and see what date you were baptized or confirmed. Remember that because that's an important date of your new beginning of sharing your light to the world. It's important because Jesus says, let your light shine. Let your light shine. In fullness of faith, we can walk with Christ. Walking with Jesus in fullness of faith. Shining for him, reflecting his light wherever we're called to be. Sharing and showing. The sun shines knowing that God, through Jesus Christ, is walking with you. You may only see one person. You know who you are in Christ. But God is with you always, walking in faith, walking with you, because you have fullness of faith in your heart. Let's pray again. <clears throat> Wonderful God, we praise you for Jesus Christ in our lives, for the spirit that embraces us now, and for your unconditional love which enfolds us as we feel your presence with us now. Bless us with faith that is bigger than mountains, but understood by all. Bless us with faith that only grows more fully with each passing day, and enable us to live fully through faith in you. We ask this as we continue to answer your call to follow and walk with Jesus.